likely doesn't bother many long-term bulls, it does point to some fundamental problems with cryptocurrencies. At one point on May 19th, Bitcoin was down around 20%. Even so, people who bought a couple years ago had still more than tripled their money. And people who had held Bitcoin for five years were sitting on gains of over 6,000%. So for many people, that kind of track record is enough to justify holding on or even buying the dip. However, it still points to some problems. First of all, extreme volatility may be desirable in a speculative risk asset, but it's not in a currency. A true currency needs to be both a store of value and a medium of exchange between people. And the volatility in Bitcoin undermines both roles. If you don't know what you can buy with your Bitcoin tomorrow or next week, that undermines its value as a currency. Second, the cause of this sell-off is troubling. It was a notice from three Chinese industry bodies banning Chinese financial institutions from taking cryptocurrencies as payment. If a state intervention like that, especially from an authoritarian government like China, can have such a big impact on cryptocurrencies, it undermines one of the cases for cryptocurrencies, which is that they are a hedge against state actors. Bitcoin may survive any number of sell-offs as a speculative risk asset, but to become a true currency, it likely needs cooperation from those same state actors and financial institutions it was originally intended to get around. China is actually a major hub for cryptocurrency mining and trading activity, but Beijing is always wary of anything that can undermine its control of society and of its financial institutions. So it's not entirely surprising that Chinese regulators have a cautious attitude towards cryptocurrencies. Investors and speculators may well continue making lots of money in cryptocurrencies, but for Bitcoin and others to become true rivals to global currencies like the dollar, they have a long way to go.